women's rights is kind of at a pretty interesting moment globally right now. And I think part of that is the internet era that we're all in. Twitter connects people, Facebook connects people, email listservs, there's lots of sharing of ideas going on that gives this conversation more momentum than maybe it's had, or at least a different kind of momentum that it has had in the past. I mean, this is not the beginning of women's rights by any stretch of the imagination, right, in the United States or in the rest of the world. But the nature of the conversation, the dynamism of the conversation is very interesting right now. And so we wanted to be tracking that, be part of that, be covering that and help move that conversation. It's partly about thinking regionally about the world in kind of an old fashioned way, trying to find out what's going on, what are the major themes of conversations in those parts of the world. But it's mostly about connecting with women who are already working on those issues in those parts of the world, getting debriefed by them and then keeping an eye through them and their help on, on what's happening. Some news is very clear, right? When Kenya passed a law legalizing polygamy, that was a news story all over the world. Um, when Brazil became the first country to pay reparations in a maternal death, that was not big news around the world, but that was big news to me. Um, and then when we wrote it, it turned out to be big news to, to quite a lot of people. And so that was interesting to see. We did a list of 15 relatively unknown women's rights activists around the world. People absolutely loved that. I'm also personally interested in the way local women's rights activists in one part of the world are connecting with women's rights activists in other parts of the world to share strategies and, um, and learn from each other and adapt in that way. And I think that's also what BuzzFeed is interested in, in part because of the internet. Conversations flow very freely between activists instead of you know, 20, 30 years ago having to go first through New York or Washington or London or Paris and get filtered by donors and, and amplifiers of the sort of resource variety. There's a lot of constructive dialogue going on in women's rights in, in trying to find ways to collaborate across cultures and, and other, other you know, barriers to better things for women. And people are really seem to me to be very hungry for stories that reflect that kind of constructive engagement with the world. So less of the nine more women were raped in Congo this week and more of the what are Congolese women's activists doing together, who are they working with outside in interesting ways to move their vision of a changed world forward. And that really seems to interest people, which is interesting because we tend to think of news consumers as very cynical. But so my experience so far has been the opposite.